Dr. Winters. You know, I mean, hey, uh, you know, you've been making me feel bad. I've been thinking about the last video you did and you're lifting those weights and doing exercise <laughs> and I'm sitting around here being a couch potato. I don't like it. <laughs> no, that's, you, you did a lot. You used to play football. I feel like, you know, as you get older, you should be able to relax. It, chill. Why can't you chill on the couch if you want to? Well, because because I should I should be uh, I should be more active, you know. I should, you know. I mean, look, look. When I was in college, you know, the white girls called me. They used to say, "Here comes Superbot." The 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 sister said, "Here's Superman." And now they're talking about here's the Blob. No, no, <laughs> no. How do I live that down? When I was in college, you know, I had a different voice. You know, my voice for my um uh, my uh, Superman voice was like this. Mm -hmm. Then I got this fat voice, and I lost my Superman. voice. What? Help me! Help me! Son, give me some power! Son, son, son give me some power! Oh, How man. are you doing today, Eve? I'm doing excellent. Um, radiating from the vitamin D that, that we've been able to get over here in between the in between oh, the rain. I love being in the sun. And I, I found that people love the sun, too. You know, it it's ancient it's an ancient love for something that we can't go to and that made me think about um well it made me think about why why we even care about it as much as it affects us and people who've studied it you know can can talk about the different affects of and then well that seems something powerful you know maybe we would want to give some praise to it or at well, least we've always done that I think that, um, well, okay, so I find that as a teacher of the little ones, I'm learning, relearning a lot of things that I should already know, or maybe do know, but forgot because, you know, we're studying that stuff for the test, right? And then until you have to teach it to someone to make sure that they understand it, do you really know it? Or did you just learn it for the test? So the sun rotates and the moon rotates and the earth rotates. And I just... I guess I wasn't even really thinking about the sun rotating as much as we are rotating around it, but it would have to, right? It's, it's celestial. It's it's in the solar system. Nothing in the solar system is static, right? Well, whatever the white man say, I'm, I'm whatever he says, I, it's got to <laughs> be right. You know, I'm I'm serious. I'm serious. How you doing? All the way free, Brad Murray. I'm hey. I'm, I'm serious. You know, because see, the thing is, this is at a Remember, he knows everything. He knows the time scales. He knows what the universe does. He knows. He knows when the first man came. He know. He knows. He knows everything. And so then, therefore, if he said it, then I'm not. I'm not going to argue with him. You know, except when I do my history programs on Thursday. But you know, I, I love the sun because he. Uh, you know, melano melanosynthesis. See, melanosynthesis is, is the whole idea is that just like plants get 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 energy, they get power from from the sun. Because of the fact that 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 we're that our bodies, our skin is full of melanin, and melanin melanin is an energy producer. That's how we get a lot of our energy too. We get a lot of our energy from the sun. We get a lot of our energy from being out in the sun. And so, therefore, it's always good to walk on a sunny day. It's always good to praise, praise, praise the mighty sun. You know. I um, I think that. It's so funny to hear people's different relationship with the sun. Everybody loves summertime or being at the beach, or at least most people that I know, I guess, because I live in a beach town, you know, or beach, ah, you know, 
minis in the background. They love the sun too. Unfortunately, it's not time for all of that. So you might hear, <laughs> you might hear Bob. That's, that's family. That That's family, you know. <laughs> but um, people's relationship with the sun here in beach, beach land on, on the East Coast in Virginia, um, all sorts of people flock to the beach. And, you know, you have people who wear covering because they don't want to have any effect of the sun. The sun hurts them, but they want to be outside. They want to be in the heat near the water. Um, and then you've got people who they, well, they have clothes on because it's not like that. But, you know, they, they got on bathing suits. They're not too worried about the effects of they're putting chemicals on themselves to make sure that they're not having any harmful effects. And then and then there's us. And then it's, some of us, I see, put on sunscreen. Some some of us don't. Um, and I always, I always thought that that was funny because I saw this uh, study where they showed people through a UV lens. Did you see that one? Where it said, this is how the sun sees you. And um, it was like white <laughs> people who don't have a lot of melanin, um, how the sun saw them, I guess it it really saw them, but then people who had melanin, the sun kind of blanketed over them. And then if you put on sunscreen, well, now the sun can really see you. And, and it's funny because they were black, you know, the UV, the UV camera had the white, the melanin less people look like very melanin rich people, but it was the sunscreen or the sunblock mm -hmm. barrier protection that was giving them that, that coating. And, um, and I, I always just found it strange that, you know, people had had to do so much to keep themselves safe. But they say skin cancer is a is a is a very real thing that we should be concerned about. So, you know, maybe maybe people who get that should be concerned about it. Yeah, well, I think they should be concerned about it. But but, you know, it does other things to it. A lot of times uh, those people who go out there, you know, of that of that persuasion, a lot of times. They end up with bad skin. A lot of times your skin can get rubbery from always being out there trying to get suntanned and stuff like that. But you have to understand is that they long for the sun because, see, you know, you got to remember how Europeans came into existence. Remember, uh, Europeans, they came into existence when black people, back around back around 10,000 B.C., 10,000 B.C. before the Younger Dryas. What happened is, is that uh, the black, that the only people in Europe, how are you doing, uh, Matris, uh, 2030 Morpheus. Morpheus. You know, around around 10,000 uh, 10, BC, what happened was during the Younger Dryas, it was a it was a it was a, a mini ice age. And what happened is that many of these black people they ran into the caves. And when they ran into the caves, because see the caves uh, served as their temples where they where they uh, practiced their religion. And so these black people ran into the caves, and because the, uh, they found in a sense that uh, that they found uh, mastodons. And the mastodons still have grass that they were chewing on when they froze to death. So this shows that it was a, a real quick freeze. And so these black people, they went into the caves and they didn't come out of the caves until uh, 1400 BC. After the yes, they they were in the caves. They were in the caves from from 10,000 10, BC to around 1400 BC in the Santorino. And so when when these black people came out of the caves, they had lost their melanin. And because they lost their melanin, then that's why there's always been this drive to try to get their melanin back. But at the same time, they want to get their melanin back. They hate us. And they hate us because, see, God, you know, they feel that God took away their melanin. No, you ran into the cave. And when you came out, oh, yes, yeah, so and when you came out of the cave, you had lost your uh, your melanin. Science. Yeah, <laughs> that's why, yeah, see, that's why, okay, just like black people, we have, uh, like, like, you know, we have light-skinned, dark-skinned kids. Well, white people, in a sense, because of the fact that the melanin moved out of the skin into their hair, that's why they have kids that have different color hair. Because, see, you know, because that's that's that same thing. But because of the fact they lost it, I'm talking about Caucasians, not white Arabs. And because they lost their uh, melanin, it's a hate of you. And they hate you because of the sun. They hate you because the sun, the sun abandoned them, they believe. No, but you abandoned the sun. Yeah. See? You know, but again, uh, it, it's very important to understand is that the sun is everything to us. I need the sun. 
Absolutely. And I'm not talking about my sons because they are headache, but I need the sun <laughs> up in the heaven, heavenly sun. You need them too. I need my sons. Um, you're a mom. You, you're a mom. You always need your son because you carried him for nine months. I ten for one of them, but let me not go there. Um, the sun is necessary. It, it it grows our food. You know, it keeps us warm. It helps us see things when you know when it's time to see things. And um, I think that maybe um, you, you got me tripping about <laughs> they ran away from the sun and now they're mad. The sun forsake them. Um, and then you've got all of these different stories where we're the forgotten and forsaken people. And, and it seems like a self-inflicted wound trying to write itself the right way in, in history, or at least insert themselves the in a better way. Um, if you, if you used to be niggas, then, you know, you used to be, and then if, if you, if you did, if you didn't want to freeze, I don't know why that would be something to be ashamed of as much as maybe you could have gone somewhere else, but you said it was like a flash freeze. Yeah. It was like a flash freeze during the younger dryers yes. and uh, everything froze so quick, but see, remember that's where the temples were. You know, they, they found, they found that you can, you can walk, you can walk into, you can walk in the caves in Scotland, England, and those and you can walk in those caves can lead all the way to Turkey underground. Oh, yeah, they had a massive thing, but again, that's that's uh, that's our they're our they're our cousins. But the thing is, this is that the sun is so important because of the power that we get from the sun, and the power that we get from the sun is that is that a lot of times you know when when they always say okay, black people had a good time in the south and we could work on the plantation, but no. In Africa, you know what the average uh, average temperature is in Africa? No, eighty degrees. Oh, eighty. But they but Europeans think it's a hundred or one hundred twenty. No, we don't <laughs> like it either when it's hot like that. When it's when it's hot like that, you know. That sounds like Sahara hot, you know. But you know they they want everybody, or at least back when I was in school, they wanted us to think that Africa was full of bush babies and huts and you know just very primal i mean in the textbooks it was very primitive types of uh depictions of africans and you know that's that's before the computer or not before the computer but before the internet so now i think that it's crazy that people are still trying to pass off this uh, people who don't know better because they don't have things when you can just look up whatever it is you're talking about, wherever it is you're talking about, and just in real time, get the lay of the land, or at least what they're presenting to the world as the lay of their land. And then, you know, see that it's not all shanties and, you know, tribes, you know, you've got cities and cars, and it's not all dry season and wet season. I, I taught eighth grade a couple of years back, we had them read A Long Walk to Water. It's about a boy named Salva from the Sudan who comes over here and he is, it's like a program because the lost boys of Sudan had to flee their homes because of the war. All right. So then it's a program. They come over here and he gives back by making these wells <coughs> all over Africa for places that don't have water. So in real time, just a couple years ago, they were trying to pass off that Africa needs water because Africa doesn't have water. And it's like, no, Africa is a very large piece of real estate, right? Maybe there's some places in Africa that don't have water, but that's not everywhere. But in real time, they can sell that story and get money for wells. And okay, I saw the well that the school that I worked at put up, or at least got the money to build or whatever. So I did see a well okay, that happened, but just um, that blanket statement ability to get see, people to get that money out. But see, it's very important that you, you people don't know the history. I remember I was at a conference years ago and I was, in, uh, and I was doing a presentation uh, using, uh, using African, 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 historical, African historical agricultural techniques to make the future brighter. And so then, and so then, after I got through talking about how how if Africans return to maybe cultivating millet and 
and using whole cultivation and, and and producing their own foods. And then when after the after the uh, presentation, my wife she said, "Clyde, those people were out there talking about killing you. These were Africans, you know." And so then you know, yes, yes, people don't want to be independent. People don't want to think for themselves. And because mm-hmm. people don't want to be independent, because people don't want to think for themselves, they'd rather they'd rather go up on a history that has nothing to do with them. You know, in my new book, uh, you know, in my new book, uh, you know, the history and culture of Aboriginal Black Americans. I talk about how, why, why the the Aboriginal Black people worship the sun. And so, uh, so when so when these uh, Europeans they said they said why are you Black Indians why are you worship the sun, they said we worship the sun because the sun is everything. The sun gives us life, as you said earlier. The sun gives us life. The sun gives us. They, the sun gives us everything. And so then therefore, in a sense, they say, well, why do you associate the sun with the God? With God? Associates the sun with God. Because the fact, in a sense, is that the sun is what produces everything that allows us to, to sustain us. And so then therefore, the sun is a representative guy. Not that we worship the sun, but we recognize in a sense that the sun, because the fact that it gives us, it gives us sustenance, you know, it gives us light. Then, therefore, in a sense, it's very important. But again, uh, you know, that's what I try to do in my book, The History and Culture of Aboriginal Black Americans, is I want to try to see why did we do the things we do? Because, see, if you remember Nat Turner, Nat Turner didn't believe in Jesus Christ. He, he, said he a, believed in um, Yahweh. Yeah, the, Yahweh, a God of war. He wanted to kick ass. I mean, come ass. On now. Jesus can't save you. you know. <laughs> But the sun is very important. And, you know, when you think about it, I mean, uh, what, a, you know, I, I don't know. Eve, do you think men, black men and black women see the sun differently? I don't know. Yes. Yes, I do. Well, um, what do you think? For, I'm glad you asked um, for the for what I said earlier. The sun rotates, but people don't even think that it's rotating unless that's something that you're into or studying. You know, a lot of people know that the earth is rotating because we have a year. They know the moon is doing something because, you know, it's not always in the same spot. But for the most part, you know, the sun is constant. And unless you're really having like a deep dive there, you're not really paying attention to its movements. So (laughs) black men and black women, uh, how we communicate and how we perceive things is different. And I think we're like the moon and the sun, Um, you guys being the sun and us being the moon. And um, I think as we're working together to make the planet do what it does, there's periods of absence or periods where we're not, you know, near each other. And then there's periods when we're boom, right on top of each other. And the people on the world, they don't know what to do when, when that happens, when, when the celestial beings collide. But um, I guess that's a very big story for a very uh, specific question. So black men and women, we move differently, but I feel like when we're with the, the person we're supposed to be with, then the, mm-hmm. the different movements are in tandem or in unison, and it can really make something multiply or grow or be sustainable or nurtured or you know all of the the good things that the sun does for the planet and the planet would be like you know a business a baby a family household you know whatever it is that they're working on together mm-hmm. you know well uh, that's uh you're absolutely correct in terms of you know women have always seen have always identified with the moon basically that's what they invented the calendar you guys invented the calendar mainly because of your menstrual cycle but the point is this is that is that is that you know I was debating with some brothers the other day, and and we were talking about the fact that that for many women, for many women, they see that they see their their they see their as you said the man they see their man as the sun, in the sense that in the sense that many women see see a man see see their man almost as a god until he gets feet of clay. Most of the time we get feet of clay because we say stupid stuff. But again, in the sense is that is that when you look up, I think that most women, most women, when they look at when they look at their man, they want their man to be to be respectful. They want their man to be upright, and they want their man to set an example. And and I and I think that in a way that's why sometimes I think that that you could in a way associate men with the sun, 
but I don't know entirely with the sun because every man shouldn't be seen as the sun. I don't think so. Because some of us are some nigger, some of us are some, uh, some brother fuckers, you know. And, uh, That's true. That's true. But the sun is just a big star, right? So if all men are stars and then all women are moons and then men are from Mars and women are from Venus. No, I'm just playing. Um, no, I, I, I think that all men have sun ability and then all women have that that primary moon ability, right? But if they're operating on their own, then they're just a star or a moon, you know, just in space. But you know, but but they're not. Well, I mean, I guess they'd have to be moving because they're in space. But who's the most powerful? The sun or the moon? Um <laughs> good question. So so me and my dude wrote a book. And, and I wish that I had a platform to be able to- What's the name it. of the book? It's called, When the Sun Tried to, I'm sorry, When the Moon Tried to Replace the Sun. That's the, that's the name of our book. It's a children's family book. And um, we'll, we'll have it again uh, for sale when we have some hard copies. But essentially it, it answers or continues the question of which is more powerful. But I'd like people to to give their own thoughts about mm -hmm. about what I'm about to say. So if the sun is leading and is not as fast as the rotations of the moon or the earth, then it would be the constant and then things would be, you know, reacting to. And then from there, I think that I don't know if it's a more powerful thing as much as it's needed in this way more. And then the other things are needed in this way more. You know, there's a balance because, um, you know, if the sun came too close to the earth, then that part of the earth would, would it wouldn't be that part of the earth anymore. It would be different. Well, I, I really feel the moon is more powerful than the sun. Is it because of um, the, the, the water on the earth? Yes, yes. Because the fact that the, since the moon could create the tides, the moon can create emotions. The moon, the moon, in a sense, it regulates us. The plant, you know, the sun, the sun, it allows us to survive. The sun allows us, in a sense, to 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 gain substance. But see, the moon affects you. The moon, I mean, uh, just like uh, just like on full moons, you know, many uh, police departments, they be looking, you know, they get they get on on guard during that period because they feel that when there's an, a full moon, there's going to be a lot more violence out there. It you is. Know, Emotions are heightened and right. absolutely. I agree. Yeah. I agree with that immediate effect. So, you know, if we're talking about if it's a direct cause and effect, you know, which one is more powerful Then, sure. The moon can have more power like that, but it's, I think it's funny that we're on opposite sides of this. You know, you're saying that the moon has more power. I'm saying the sun might have more power. Why do you think the sun has more power? I think that the sun has more power because without it, we die. <laughs> like, I mean, if the moon goes away, I, that would cause havoc. And it's so crazy. We're talking about this. This is my story. This is our story. Um, when the moon tried to replace the sun, um, everybody was like, yeah, the sun's here all the time. Why not? You know, why not have a change of pace? Like, let's go. And, and it's a party because emotions are up and everybody gets to feel good. But then things start dying and the, the waves and the, the tides and it's just a lot going on. And again, there's nothing being um, created because the thing that, that allows life to happen, at least on a, on a, um, a forestry, a uh, Herbal? What's the word I'm looking for? On a biological level, <laughs> we need the sun for that to happen, for seeds to germinate and sprout and give us the food that we need. Um, I guess unless we're moving to a technological society where machines are making everything, and then I guess maybe we wouldn't need the sun. But um, the people were sad that everything was dying, so they called out to the sun for the sun to come back. And eventually the sun, you know, was like, yeah, it's not their fault that they're emotional people. They got the moon over there, you know, and the sun comes back and saves the day. <laughs> but um, I think it's like a mom and a dad, you know, which one is more important? Ah, how can you answer that? Because you need them both. But there's I don't know. 
operating with just one doing better than people who had both. So I think you need, I think you need both, but I think that in terms of, in terms of a family, a father, people don't really think the mom needs a father for, for, for her, for her, for her reality. And since the, the mom may need the father, but see, the thing is, this is that I don't think kids really, I don't think kids really, really care about their fathers till they get about maybe, uh, maybe 12, 13, then I, then I think they believe they a father is important to them. That's what I, I don't know. That's what I just noticed with my kids. You know, is that uh, maybe you know because see the the thing is this is that it seems as though as they get older and they want to know more about the world. Then in a sense they turn to their fathers because see then the father becomes the son. But see because of the fact that that the mom represents that stability, the mom represents that joy. You know. And see, and see, a good mother, a good mother makes her kids feel good and makes her husband feel good. And so then therefore, in a sense, you see in you see in you see in a woman in a sense that 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 whole idea of of being sunshine, where she's supposed to be the moon, she still reflects. And see, this is this is the whole most important thing to understand is that you know the sun, the sun shines, but then here's the crazy thing: in space it's cold. Go figure. See. So it's something. So so is the sun really powerful? Mm. Again, it is. What is the sun affecting, right? So then, in this solar system, the sun is affecting the planets that the people in positions of power have said are planets that we need to pay attention to. Sorry. Well, Venus is cold. Jupiter is cold. I mean, Ju one of them is real hot. Saturn or Jupiter. One of them is real super hot. The most of them are real cold. And so then, therefore. If 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 space is cold and if space is dark, then then in a sense is the sun the sun is important and the sun is very important, especially in terms of how it it affects. How are you doing, Doraville? But at the same time, but at the same time, the sun it it has an influence only on this plane, you see. But then but then again, the astrologers say that, that stars play a role and stars are sun. And 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 the power. Where's where's this power coming from? Why do we need this power? And 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 how do we gain this power? You know, and I I do believe in Milano Milano synthesis, and Milano synthesis is the whole idea that 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 melanin in your skin, it it absorbs it absorbs in a sense energy from the sun, and it gives us that little extra. You know, you know. How you doing, Eugene Braxton, American most experienced mystic? I think that it's very important in a sense that. That we think about how do you get this power? How can how can we send it this power? How can we get the power? You know, and and then in a sense is that we're thinking about the sun, but but then is the president the sun? Is is the is the uh, is the CEOs the sun? Come on now, is our celebrities the sun? They act like it. They call them they call them stars. They call it. Hey, that's a good point. Um, those people in those positions of power who label things that we're supposed to pay attention to, they know that we're people who track the stars. So then, you know, words have meaning and, and then we don't care. We're just throwing them away, but then they're giving very powerful words to things that might need to be uh, deprioritized. You know, if you weren't looking at entertainers as stars, then maybe you wouldn't be worried about if Diddy got on the plane or not. You know, like you got your own problems to worry about, but no, everybody wants to talk about something else. So then maybe that is a sun, you know, if it's absorbing all of the energy. But is that a sun or is that like a black hole? Because I feel like a sun is just giving energy. And like you said, it's only really affecting us here on Earth with regards to what we're able to grow or sustain. I mean, just life. Um, because life like this doesn't exist on the, those other planets that are in our solar system. So, you know, how much power does the sun have really? Or is it just our proximity to, you know, what we have on this planet? And um, I don't know if there's any other melanated beings on, on other planets in the solar system. But, you know, maybe our presence here in general is why the sun does what it does with the things that are on the planet. Yeah, and but but it's but it's 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 the sources of power, and how do we how do we and see and, and it's it's how we 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 give we give people we give people the power of the sun by the simple fact that 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 we bow down to whatever they tell us, 
by the simple fact that we allow people to lead us. I mean, uh, just like uh, just about most of us is that, uh, you know, certain people like like I'm not going to tell a lie in a way to me, in a way to me, uh, Professor Black is like the sun, you know, because Professor Black, when I wake up every day, I try to find him when he was off for a week, you know, Professor Black, you broke my heart. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 the thing is, this is that, you know, Professor Black, in a sense, he seems to be he seems to be uh, legit. And the thing is, this is that he he always gives us this this knowledge, this power, and and what I like what I like about him is that it's not centered it's not centered in a particular direction, except this information that allows you to grow. and And I think that's what the sun is like, isn't it? Doesn't do. the sun allow us to grow? I, I, I would agree different. with that comparison. Um, and uh, I guess just a shout out to him because I guess I've had this initial thought from something that he said about power about power just being it just is you know <laughs> and then from there i couldn't come up with an, an I, what just is the sun the sun just is and you're right he's an on time consistent source of fuel for people who need that type of you know nourishment and then they can go yeah <laughs> but you know years ago years ago I'll never forget uh Never forget that uh, that when when I uh, when you were with uh, with when you were with Professor Black, and then uh, you know uh, Professor Black said he can't. He said he can't say no to you. Why is it that people can't say no to you? Why? <laughs> what? You're supposed to be the moon, but people. I hear people all the time say I can't say no. I can't say no to Eve. Why? What is what? What is what is this? Is that power? Is that coming from the sun too? It is a reflection, like you said, ah. and and thank you. Um, I think that if if people want something, then they have to you know do the work to get it. But um, people <laughs> people are funny. Uh, what I mean by that is nobody's the same. But if you're the same, then they can't do anything but either rock with you or not rock with you. And today, something that I heard, I had I had a wonderful conversation with um, the the creator of, of Optimus Prime, and he was talking about uh, he was talking about power too, and and it kind of all came back to <laughs> Eve is persistent, <laughs> and from there I I am. So if that's the if that's the Eve you met, then I would I would agree with that. Um, De definition of me because I am if it's something that I want that I'm definitely going to try to to get it or, or bring it to you and um some of these conversations I feel are are super necessary so I'm gonna I'm gonna go above and beyond to try to make sure that it happens to get the information out there and as <laughs> as I'm only a reflection I feel like I, my immediate example my my dude, the leader of of our household, he he's he goes out and gets things done. Yeah. I can't I can't work like that, or at least he doesn't want me to because it's dangerous out there in the streets. So you know, um, but that kind of brings back to what you said about the mom and the dad and how your children or your minis uh, didn't really start looking to you until about twelve, and it's because the mom is the first teacher, and we're here in the home, and dad's out getting it done. He's doing the work. He is out in the world. So who would you go speak to about the world, but the person who's out there experiencing it, not that your mom can't or that she won't. And even now in 2024, women are working. It's not like we're in the house or anything, but as a people, we are, we're cavemen. Like, so, you know, people. Why do you, why do you, why do you say you're cavemen? Like, I don't no. understand. People are cavemen like because they they get home and they're home. They don't go outside. Their their blinds are shut. They're not socializing with their neighbors. And unless there's something to go do, I don't see a lot of people outside unless they're homeless or unless it's nothing to do during during the the pandemic. There's a lot of people outside. Strangely, because you weren't supposed to really be around other people, but people were outside because places were closed. So it's like there was nothing to do. So I'm going to just go outside. But now, you know, people have kind of reverted back to 
I'm home. I've got my device. I got my TV. I got I have my food. I have everything I need here in my little cave. What, what do I need to go outside for? And that's life for a lot of people every day. Doesn't matter the season unless they're going to do something specific. Maybe, maybe back in the day, or at least when we were people who sourced our own food, we had to be outside more. Oh. How were you going to eat if you weren't? But, you know, now things are easy, so we can be caveman like, you know, bring everything in the cave. Don't so, have to. How, how you doing, Atia, to you and uh, Dorvel and Chill Will 2050? What up, dude? But I also feel, in the sense of that, 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 that what happened is that, uh, to me, to me, the uh, pandemic destroyed the universe. How you doing, Karen Benzin? It destroyed our universe because, you know, I was talking to some, uh, some people. And you know, just the, just the fact, just the fact that that now now um, Walmart is in twenty four hours, that's made a, a very big difference because the uh, great blackness. What up? You know that made a, a very a very big uh, a big difference because see, when Walmart was open, you know it was some place for you to to go. You know now in a sense you had to kind of almost just about stay in your cave. You know, and uh, and because you almost had to stay in your cave, then therefore in a sense it's it's mainly because the fact is that so much is limited now. So much is limited now. And, you know, I mean, you used to, used to love the springtime because the springtime, you know, you drive in your car and you see the women in their booty shorts. Not really. I wasn't even looking at stuff like that. You know. No, of course I not. Did, I, that's just what my sons told me. Right. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, you know, as soon as it get kind of warm, everybody kind of dresses nice. You know, but then, but, but what happened after what happened after the pandemic is that everybody just got so fat. You know, they got so fat, and 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 it was it is it's the it's the truth. It's the truth. It is. I I remember an email that I got from our principal at the school that I was working at, and it was because we were going back to work after the pandemic and virtual and stuff. She said, for the rest of the year, you can wear jeans, and the whole school applauded. All the teachers were so excited about wearing jeans to school. And, you know, essentially it was just because she was telling them that she knows that your business clothes don't fit anymore and you don't have to go buy stuff, but you can (laughs) be business up top and, you know, you can wear your party time at the bottom, but don't get all carried away. No ripped jeans, but you can wear your jeans or your sweats or joggers or whatever. And you're right. A lot of people got fat during the during the pandemic but that's cuz they were stuck in their caves or they weren't they were just outside with nothing to do and um while uh, that's a whole oxymoron i guess I, I went to go buy skates like roller skates and mm-hmm. they were sold out because everybody was doing these outside activities now things that they didn't used to do where there used to be a surplus, now there isn't a surplus, and actually it's a back order, and you know you have to wait for all of this stuff now. So, but you know it's kind of hard because uh, you know uh, the pandemic, the pandemic. What happened with that is that I know a lot of bowling alleys and a lot of uh, a lot of uh, skating places. A lot of them closed down, and and they haven't been able to reopen. And yeah. and and so 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 in a way, in a way. You know, people have lost power. People have lost the ability to get out there in the sun and and generate, in a sense, generate good feelings, generate good times. You know, I mean, I mean, uh, most of the time, if you got a good relationship with your partner, a lot of times you have more more fun just going around, walking around the beach, or walking around the park, or or, or being together. You know, it, that it doesn't necessarily cost money. You know, to really have a good time. You see. Yeah. But but the point is this is that uh in, in in reality in reality you know it it's harder now to be able to 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 really appreciate the sun and that like you said unless you got to go out you don't go out but uh but the thing is this is that we need to be out we need to be out there you know especially as a black person you need to be outside you know, that's why people used to sit on their porches and everything. You do. If you go to the doctor for a checkup, they're going to tell you you have a vitamin D deficiency. And then they're going to try to pump you with vitamins. And I'm not saying that you don't have a vitamin D deficiency, but I am saying that it's very easy fix if you just take your ass outside. But, um, you know, most most of us after after school or 
I'm sorry. If you weren't a person in sports, you know, outside playing, if you weren't riding your bike, you know, being social like that, it's kind of, it was an uphill battle for you anyway, because you, you didn't have any reason really, you know, people who were doing sports, they, the game is outside, you know, the, the field is outside, the, the, the competition is outside. So you have to be outside. You got to be ready for the elements. And that kind of gives you a thick skin. And then, well, sometimes that carries over into adulthood where people still, you know, do things. They, they hang out outside or they have children like how we do and we play with them. And, you know, we're doing things out and about. However, I think that the socializing aspect, you know, that the pandemic really kind of messed up being outside because nobody really wants to talk. And I'm that, I, hi, I'm Eve. I, I'm a person who doesn't really like to talk to people outside. I very mm-hmm. much want to get what I'm trying to get and get home or get to the next destination, you know, or if I want to be outside, let me enjoy being outside without having to to talk, but I'm trying to uh, get over that, you know, because in real time, I feel like the fact that we don't talk to each other is, it it's hurting us too. You know, I think our connected connectedness as a people, um, it, it might be nurtured by the sun, you know, but if you're, if you're told to stay inside or if nothing interests you is, if, nothing outside interests you and everything you want to do is on the screen or inside, then, you know, we're not going to be able to level up as a people. But do we, but do we really know any, any better? Karen Vincent said, I have a lot of windows in each room of my house. That's are the, they, are they blind? Are the blinds open Karen? Cause I have about 38 windows in my house and I'm going to tell you the only blinds that are open are the specific ones that I want open when I want them open. Well, I have I have a lot of windows in in, in the house I bought because I, I I bought my wife a new house before before uh, you know after we had been a little after we had been a little bitty house for years you know uh, you know I decided to buy her a, a, a big house a lot of green and full of windows and now she's not even here with me to enjoy it but that's life but the thing is this is that I do think that Karen is very Karen is right you you do need to let the sun shine in you do need in a sense to to bring this stuff in, but but see this power, this power from the sun is, is so important because the fact is this is that uh, a lot of kids, you know, they're staying in the house and not going out, and because they're not going out, they're always on the video playing video games, and as you said, a lot of us are, are couch potatoes and stuff, and uh, you know, and, and so the thing is this is that we need to get out, but then what makes it so bad is that if you did play sports. The big problem is when you get old, all these ailments come back, you know, like like I played linebacker. So this thumb is all this thumb is always killing me. It's always killing me because yeah. I used to get a lot. Yeah, I used to get a lot of drop thumbs, you know, when when you bend down balls and tackling people. So this thumb, it'll just be be throbbing, you know, your knees. I remember, uh, you know, uh, David uh, Mhotep may rest in power, you know, uh, he uh he he lived in he lived he lived in uh, he lived in Virginia Roanoke he lived down in Roanoke and uh, he you know he died uh he died last year and you know we used to talk a lot because he uh I played linebacker and David David Mhotep he played running back but <laughs> but since he since he was born since he was born earlier in the in the in the year he always called me I was his little brother you know <laughs> but the point is this is that is that it's the it's the beauty it's the beauty of of recognizing and being out there, being in the sun, as you said, being athletic, having fun, and 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 that's and that's the most important thing. And I think that I think that that's what hurt people. I, I hear these people talking about dating, and they're talking about oh, men don't like to date anymore. Women say they can't find anybody to date. But then the thing is, this is that they don't know how to really enjoy it. A lot of times, if we ju- if we really allowed this, really allowed our, ourselves to really absorb. The everyday stuff, the sun, getting to know each other. But you know, everything is so transactional now. Okay, I'll take you out. Well, you better have sex with me later. And uh, or, or you know, and so then it, every everything everything is, is is for a price. And and I and I think that 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 you can get so much power from the sun, and that that because you can get this power from the sun, and it's and it's free. 
it's free. You see, now those those people who go to tanning tanning place and all that now that's different. But the power that you can get from the sun is free, and and it's there. It's there. For, it's there for the taking. You know, but 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 we're so we're so afraid. And, and I know you said earlier you don't like to talk. I I don't. I don't mind talking, you know, because when I see when I see a sister, she, all sisters always have a frown on their face, but I can always make them smile because they say, damn, come on, stop that. You know, I'm, I'm old, so you don't have to worry about me messing with you. And then they start smiling and see, you know, because because, you know, a lot of times you want you, you know, as, as a woman, as a black woman, you, you don't want people, people messing with you. So even though you may look nice, even though you may look really good. You don't want, in a sense, people always be trying to talk to you. So that's kind of something that we have to think about. And sometimes that's why you see a lot of frowns on sisters' faces. But I understand that that's just their outward appearance. But again, you know, when you don't when you don't know your community, then you don't understand what's going on. Great blackness says yes, it is powerful, and it is. But there, but there for us waiting each day. The sun is powerful. Yes, it's powerful. You see, but we have to, in a sense, we have to understand what's going on. You know. And then, you know, Karen, Karen Vincent says, I can see the moon from my second floor window. I'm sitting here and I can, I can write, I can write through my curtains. I, I blind are up. Yeah, you know, you keep the blinds up. But again, it says my wife, she is kind of interesting. Great blackness, right? Oh, no. My wife, though, she was kind of interesting. She, said she wanted always the windows open. She wanted always the curtains open and stuff. And, you know, you know, I used to always say, "Well, what about what about those uh, peeping times?" Ah, get out of here, Clyde. You know, and so then, but so she always wanted to have a lot of sunshine around the house, and uh, and the thing is, this is that uh, she she enjoyed that. But see, the whole point is, this is that, you know, that was her. She want she liked to walk and stuff and all that type of stuff, and she was always about about exercise. You know how how you ladies y'all like to keep in shape. Us well, you know, we're, we're we're coming there, but you know, but the thing is, this is that I, I think that I think that the more that you can allow the sun, the more you can allow the sun to 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 if you can reflect some of that power from the sun, I think it gives you a greater a greater understanding of life, you know, and and I think that 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 most of us really don't live life. We don't re live life because we we refuse to really. Except the sun power being outside. I don't know, you know. I agree with you. Um, I find that uh the the people who like to be in the caves, you know, their skin's a little lighter, you know, they're they're not as energetic. And you know, these devices they they absorb energy, you know, and then the sun is giving out energy. So if you're not around the the giver, then the taker is really gonna take. And, and if you never replenish that energy, then you're going to be tired all the time. And, and people are tired all the time, you know, and, and it's not because they did anything. You should not be tired from being in front of a screen for eight hours. Like if that was your job, if all you did was you got in the car, you drove to work, you sat down, logged in, you got lunch, came back, logged in, got back in the car and went home. You should not be tired from that. But you are because these devices are vampires and we're pouring all of whatever into it, you know, whatever your job is, or even if you're just a person who just exists online all day, you know, you're pouring into it. And then you're never taking a, a pause or a beat. You're not plugging in and, and you could, but the time of day that, that you're plugged into the device is the time that the sun is doing its thing. You know, so then you miss out on on the benefits. And it's a really fucked up system. If you really think about it, it sounds like people want us to be away from this energy giver. And for what is it because it doesn't treat them the same? Because I'm, I, I'm sorry, I keep hearing these people with no melanin saying that they were slaves in Egypt. And I just don't that math doesn't math to me dr winters it will never math to me there was no sunscreen back there there was no sunblock back then and if and if, if <laughs> i'm sorry i've seen people with sunburn and if that is your reality that being in the sun too long without protection makes you look like this well you were not a slave how, how were they getting any work 
out of you right. if that is what you look like in the sun. That doesn't you make you would have died. I'm saying, and then they say, no, black people, you need to use sunscreen, sunblock. And then I'll say, well, our ancestors, you weren't worried about them, you know, and they were living to very big ages if they weren't, you know, killed, essentially, you know, they uninterrupted, even with all of the work and all of the sun exposure and all of the sun, very big ages. Yeah. Harriet Tubman lived to be how old with all of the trips to back and forth. Yeah. What, the, what now, are you talking about? And when you hear when you hear uh, slaves slaves uh, enslaved people live to be eighty years old, tear to you. Those of us that are that are original man to this land get automatic downloads from the sun. You know it, it's it's very important to really look at this stuff because when you think back, when you think back, is that and, and people get mad at me, but see, you know, as, as black people, we we hold we hold the uh, we hold the Bible as 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 as, as you know, sacred saint that is sacred, and and we everything is the word of God. But see, though those first books, that's not the word of God. That's history. You know, Chronicles, Genesis, all that type of stuff. That's history. And yet, and yet, we know in a sense, people who've done the research, we know that that the uh, that the Egyptians did not have slaves build the pyramids or build any monuments. You know, most of the time they did the work. They do did the work off the off. They did the work. During the non-planting season, and then in a sense, we we got we got evidence that the Egyptians paid wages, or they got or they got food, and then they would go. Then when it was time to harvest or plant, then they would go back and go back to the fields. And we know this, and yet and yet you got some people who 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 just who just in a sense became just in a sense became uh became uh you know uh, Hebrews you know in the Caucasus Mountains. You know, years and years afterwards, and yet these are the original people. And you know, and it's and it's just it's just so sad that that because people don't really become invigorated by the sun, that they lose that they lose their sense of history. You know, and see, history is very important because you know you've been taught you've been taught that that they've been ruling the world for two thousand years, and that's a lie. They only they only started. You know, I mean, we were ruling them from seven eleven A.D. to fourteen ninety two. And then from 1492, from 1492 to about 1700, to about 1800, they was engaged in wars. And then the next thing you know, no European civilization has lasted longer than 200 years. They just don't last longer than 200 years because they go into a process in which they become very, uh, they become, they become very non-productive. What I mean non-productive is, is that they turn away from, uh, from the natural stuff, you know, man and woman, you know, having children. And every everything is to be non-productive, and that they're all you know. As long as I can be, as long as I've been in school, and even when I read, even when I read, uh, you know, uh, a Christmas Carol, they're always talking about overpopulation, the same thing. And yet we see so many empty places, and we see that if, if people take advantage of the sun in terms of the power it has to to give us sunlight to get, allow us to grow, that 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 there is plenty for everybody. And yet, in the sense is that you always have these, these these people who are who happen to be in control today, always telling you that there's limitations in terms of what you can do. There's limitations in terms of how you can live, and that's not really, in a sense, correct. It's crazy limitations on renewable resources, right? Um, sunlight, water, <laughs> wind. Um, no, you have to pay for those things because if you don't, well anarchy and chaos abound. Um, I don't know if we need all of these limitations as much as people can abuse things if there aren't certain stipulations in place. And sometimes I feel like that's a, that's a, a projection of sorts, you know, not that everybody's going to be like that, but yeah, some people are going to be like that. And maybe there need to be protections in place for people who are going to abuse things that are, um, in abundance, but if it's always, then can it be abused like that? Or is the withholding of the abuse? And you can't withhold the sun, right? But you can make people stay inside for the, the hours of the day that they would get the most benefit. You can make them stay inside by telling them that you need money to pay bills and you gotta, you gotta live, you need money to eat. Why? Because you're not out there growing it yourself. 
And if you are growing it yourself, you need money to, to buy these tools that, okay, you don't need money for that either, but you need money for this special soil and special fertilizer, special seed, you know, there, there's money to be made. And if there is money to be made, then there's going to be somebody abusing it. So look at this that, you know, it's so much, you know, people can't even enjoy, you know, do you, can you imagine our, our, I was hearing on the news a couple of weeks ago, how there's people who are making a hundred thousand dollars living in their cars, hundred thousand dollars a year living in their cars. And it's so many people living in their cars. It's so many people that can't take advantage. Like you said, is that we spend all day at work and you know, you go, you go to work in the morning and then I can enjoy the sunshine. I'm retired, so I can enjoy it. But anyway, I can enjoy it. But I used to couldn't enjoy it. And but and the thing is, this is that it it's just it's just so sad is that we don't do anything. Back back in the day, back in the day when I was growing up, your the front porches, the front porches was always full of people. You know, even even all the way until even after and then after and then after you know they'd always say get home, get home by uh, sundown. By the time the street lights came on. And then the people would be on the front on the front steps and you know still talking and, and relating. And now we're just so afraid of one another. A lot of us are afraid of one another, and a, and a lot of us are always you know always feeling that somebody's going to, to hurt us. You know, and 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 yes, we've we've always been a little cautious. I mean, growing up, it's always been game banging, always been shooting. And as a as a, as a black teenager, you was always a kind of afraid as a male that you that you could get hurt. But I think that today, people are so people are so afraid, and 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 because of the fact that people are afraid of each other, people refuse to really allow themselves to really enjoy the power of the sun, and 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 to get out there. You know, we're we're not really using our parks like we should. You know, the museums. We're not we're not really in a sense really going out there and and getting that power that that can generate among us. You know, more more. Uh, interest in, in, in the world, interest in, in who we are, interest in each other. And I think that I think that because of the fact that, that people don't have time to communicate, I think that that's one of the reasons why we, we find poor relationships. I don't know. No, you're right. You're right. They're even, they even took the sun away from the babies, you know, because, you know, when I was in school, I think all of grade school had recess. And then as I got older, some grade school got recess, you know, the little kids got recess. And then in college, I found out that, you know, the little, little kids got recess. And then, you know, now you're only outside for specific things again. So Mm -hmm. it's like, damn, they don't even want the babies to get that charge up, that, that energy boost. And I think that it's more than an energy boost. It's got to be, um, maybe the, the melanin in our brain maybe gets an energy boost and maybe it, gives us thoughts that we wouldn't have otherwise. I'm not sure. Or maybe it uncalcifies things. You know, we everything that we, well, not everything, a lot of the things that we in, ingest and, and put in, in our bodies is making other things not work, you know? So absence of things that would help us along, you know, um, you're talking about your joints and have a tea for that. I'm gonna send you some tea, Doctor Winters. We're gonna. Get it tea. won't help. It won't help. <laughs> it's gonna. It's gonna get things. Well, no, it's not gonna make your thumb not do Earth. what it's coming. No, but it uh, arthritis and joint pain. Um, yeah, yeah, it can. It can address that. Um, but people don't like to. People don't like some of these easy fix because they're not easy fixes. When I say an easy fix, I mean nature gave it to you. Easy. People think easy fixes are I popped a pill and the pain is gone. Easy. That math doesn't math either. But you know, but but you're absolutely correct is that natural things are natural things are very important. You know, and uh, and the thing is this is that uh, you know, back in the sixties, I remember I, I was reading this article once it's talking about that that black people had the best diet in the world because we always we mix we only had a little meat in our food. It was mainly all vegetables and stuff like that. But then, but then my generation said, forget that. We were tired of eating pigtails, pig feet, and 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 all that type of stuff. You just don't know all that. Ah! But but the thing is, this is that it's 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 very important in a sense that we go back to nature. 
And then, you know, I used to love Cheerios. And then they said that they're putting stuff in Cheerios to, 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 to affect your gender. I mean, damn, can I have something? And can we have something, you know? <laughs> the bio, whatever, whatever, genetic engineered stuff. Man, okay, here's, here's how I like to shop. Just if you wanted to know, if anybody wants to. This is how I like to shop. If the ingredients are more than what I can pronounce, it's probably not something I need to be eating a lot of. Not that I'm not going to eat it, because look, people think that I'm holier than thou. I'm not. I I, I drink Slurpees sometimes, like that red for you, ah, man. And sometimes I let the kids drink Slurpees, but it's not an everyday thing. It's a moderation thing. And our bodies were made perfectly to be able to withstand pretty much anything you do to it, as long as you're doing things that help it along the way, you know, giving it appropriate sunlight, you know, giving it the right amount of water. People aren't doing those basic things and then, you know, mad that they got cold. Okay. Your body's trying to help you out by getting that mucus up out of you, but you know, no, you, you can't even appreciate your body cleaning itself. <laughs> you think that everything's wrong and you need to take a pill mm -hmm. for it. I mean, I guess if it's, debilitating then maybe you do need to do something about it but that quick fix thing i think no the, sun can do that. the sun can do that for some things be a quick fix it some can. people with depression you know um periods of time outside in the sun um doing things that make sense have shown to make them have a better outlook on things and i think that that's crazy because it's all about our perception same person, nothing significant happened except for their exposure to this life source. And then, you know, the positive reinforcements, all of it together, you know, can help them along the way. And um, I just think that the sun is power, but it's not saying the moon's not power too. We just, we just weren't really talking about the moon just yet. Yeah. Well, the moon, I think the moon is proper, but the sun is, the sun is the sun is everything, you know, because I mean, just like now, just about all of us, because of the fact that we spend so much in, inside, you know, and, and those of us who have to work, you know, that that you just about have to take vitamin D. You have to take a lot of vitamin D to keep up, keep up that. And then and then with and then with these pandemics going around, you gotta take a lot of zinc. Because if you don't take the zinc and therefore in the cell, then therefore the thing things break down. And then they're trying to they're trying to attack us from a genomic a genomic basis. In other words, they're trying to go straight to your straight to your genes mm -hmm. to affect you. And then and then that's kind of a that's kind of a sad, you know, because a natty what up though? A natty says in nature all the albino animals in general never make it long because they stand out to their predators. That's true, but uh, Europeans are not albinos. That's because they can tan, and because they can tan or they wear clothes. They can, uh, they can, you know, see you know, albinos is, is a different state. But see, we always like to, in a sense, try to find some way to 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 give people relativity when really there is none. You know, let's uh, let's uh, let's take a, a break with some uh, a few commercials. Yes, commercials. Buy our stuff. <laughs> my book blacks and you're trying to ch what's up everybody it's eve follow me on what's up everybody it's eve follow me on twitter and youtube for space recordings and special live programs 2024 we're doing things a little different if you haven't peeped game by now so yeah this is your chance you can do it now if you want hit the bell here on youtube at just eve b or find me on X at Justice, the number four, Just Us. That's J-U-S-T-I-C-E, the number four, J-U-S-T underscore U-S. And if you feel so inclined, support my channel and the work we do over here. The Cash App and Patreon links are in the description. Black first. 
Don't forget to uh, try to get one of those uh, sweatshirts. I'm dreaming. Hey, I've just written a new book, History and Culture of the Black Aboriginals of America. Yes, yes, I've written a new book. This book is called History and Culture of Afro-Americans. It's about the Aboriginal Americans. It's about the first people who inhabited America. Many people don't know about our great culture, this super culture that we created, but I discussed this book. In 489 pages, you'll find out so much information, great information, about, in a sense, what uh, the Aboriginal foundational Black Americans did. You're going to see, in a sense, that Black people contributed much here. When the first Europeans got here, that's what they found. Yes, they found Black Aboriginals inhabiting the Americas. It was the Black Aboriginals that built this country. This is why you had to get my book, get my book, History and Culture of the Aboriginal Blacks of the, the Americas. In this book, you will find out the truth. You will know what we created. You will know who we are. Get this book. Buy it now. Today is today. We need to homeschool our children due to white supremacy. In many states, education departments are passing laws to deny our children from learning the history of foundational black Americans. Today, you can learn how to organize your ch and teach your children in a homeschool in my book, A Guide to Homeschool Foundational Black Americans. You can use my book, History of Blacks in America from Prehistory to 1877 to teach our children their, their history, their history here in the United States. You can use my book to teach world history. And this book I've written is called The World History of the Black World. This will teach your children about every black civilization in the world. Get this book. The time is now. Get these books to teach your children about their greatness, to prevent them from losing confidence in their own ability to learn and be successful future adults in employment and education. Hey. It's time for the Afrocentric Researcher course led by Dr. Clive Winters. Join this course. The 15-week Afrocentric Researcher course will begin on April 16, 2024. It will last between 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. You can go to clyde98.gumroad.com slash l slash to join the class. The Afrocentric Researcher course is vital. In this course, you will learn how to do research. It will help you to write and, and conduct research. You see, you're going to learn how to do research. You're going to learn how to interpret research literature. And you're going to learn how to write books and articles. Yes, yes, books and articles. And you're going to learn how to use research data to improve your small business. Already, in a sense, many former students have began to write articles and books that they published. You too can write these articles and books after you take my class. You can make a single payment of $599. You can go to Clyde98.gumroad.com slash L slash ZBWRJR, or you can make monthly payments. Go to Clyde98.gumroad. Join me for my 15-week Afrocentric Researcher course. It's going to be the class that's going to help you to really be a success. It's going to start... April 16, 2024, 7 to 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. Join us. Join us in this class. Learn how to do research. It's up to you. What's up, everybody? It's Eve. Follow me on Twitter and YouTube for space recordings and special live programs. 2024, we're doing things a little different if you haven't peeped game by now. So, yeah, this is your chance. You can do it now if you want. Hit the bell here on YouTube at just eve b or find me on x at justice the number four just us that's j-u-s-t-i-c-e the number four j-u-s-t underscore u-s and if you feel so inclined support my channel and the work we do over here the cash app and patreon links are in the description black first
No, you are. You got to protect the brain, and uh, that's why it's beautiful. You got to support the people who st stand up. If you're oh, not going to speak up, to them, you got to support them. You got to support them. You know, I mean, people like uh, Professor Black. You don't have to get out and uh, try to. Uh, you don't have to get out and try to talk to us and take the time. You know, I mean, yeah, and he's not getting paid for that. I mean, you don't make a lot of money off YouTube unless you can get a million uh, views, like like uh, Shay Shay. You know, uh, you know, sharp and you know some of those people, but the, but the thing so support the people they're trying to stand up for us. Support those people who take the time. How you doing, Brad Murray, and uh, Jaylen Prasad? Oh no, you know, you got to, you got to be supportive. You know, that's one, that's one of the things that make make uh, Eve such a beautiful woman. You know, is that is that she takes the time to to to. To speak up, she she she's not afraid to really speak her mind, you know, and and she's ready to be supportive. And we had to support people like that, you know. All of us, all of us, don't have the time to do this. And you know, you're always taking a chance when you do this. Why are you taking a chance? You're taking a chance that people don't understand where you're coming from. Support the, you know, support the brain. Support support uh, support those people who speak up, you know, because. When at least if you're supporting those people, at least that makes them feel that they should do this. You know, that's if you want to really get some sunshine, you want to get some power, support those people. You know, they don't have to do that. That's a very timely commercial. Shout out to Yoshi. He is he is a creative dude. Man. <laughs> My hat's off to him. Um certain art, it's foreign to me. And I, I really, I really respect people who can you know, do certain types of things and, and make their sound make sense. And uh, thank you, Dr. Winters, because uh, I find that, well, some people don't like asking dumb questions and probably because of people like me. So I apologize in advance. I absolutely think that there are dumb questions, but I also think that be ready for the person response. Whoever you're asking the question of, you got to be ready for their response. Uh, in real time, I, I've had teachers tell me that that's a dumb question, but I've also had teachers tell me that they know that other people didn't want to ask the question. So 
Okay. You know, there's that. And I guess it's a hit and miss. Maybe you don't know it's a dumb question because you don't speak up. Or maybe there are no dumb questions and you just need to be able to understand it. The person didn't speak it to you the way that you could get it. And that happens all the time. People learn things differently. So I apologize for being that type of a one-minded person. But, you know, as it stands, there's not a lot of people who want to speak up anyway. So. Uh, David uh, David says, Dr. Williams, why has r one and American Indians been suppressed? That's because of the fact that this is that uh, very few, very few American Indians would carry R1A. And R1A, R1A is basically... R1A is basically in a in a in a a Y haplogroup haplogroup that you find that you find in places like Chad and Cameroon, and not that many people came here from from Chad and Cameroon. Cameroon, the the original the original uh, the original uh, Aboriginal Black Americans uh, carried R1B, and that's Anzic man, ten thousand years old, and it's very interesting that twenty five percent twenty five percent of black people today still carry R1B. That shows in a sense that, that some of us are, are 10,000 years old. You're old, but again, uh, you know, uh, it's very important to take into account is that the sun is everything for us. Um, you know, when people talk about power, you know, you've got people who use power the right way, and then you've got people who abuse power. And then I find that most people don't want the responsibility, you know, they don't, they don't want to be a person who's going to treat people bad because they feel like they have to, to prove a point. And they don't want to be the person who everybody's mad at because they didn't do, you know, what everybody wanted them to do. And I think that, you know, when we're tackling some of these basic concepts here on reality check, it's okay for you to come to this conversation at wherever you are, in understanding because I don't know everything, but I know that the sun is a pretty constant motherfucker. And if we can have any example, you know, we can look to nature. I've had a couple conversations with Mr. Neely Fuller and he makes things so simple. You know, he, he can revert things back to nature and then say, Eve, why are you making it so complicated? And yeah, maybe I did. Maybe I overcomplicated this maybe we do that. You know, we want a bigger, better answer for something that we already know. You know, if you feel a little drained, go outside, get some sunlight, see if that gives you a little perk. Brad, uh, Murray, Brad Murray said, I was drawn to Jess Eve because I needed a woman perspective to listen to, who was articulate, clear, and concise. A lot of good information. Yeah, yes, yes. That's why, that's why she's here. That's why she's bringing to you, and we're trying to bring to you these ideas. But more than that is that is that you have to understand is that the sun the sun generates its power and because of mel melanosynthesis because of the fact that in the sense is we're always trying to 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 metabolize this 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 energy that's coming from the sun that it allow us to be able to 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 be who we are and 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 most of the time we're not allowed to be who we are and see the thing is this is that many women many women you know let's just face it I'm not going to tell a lie. They talk a lot about the uh, Black Power Days. The Black Power Days, they felt a sister should be in the kitchen cooking some chicken, you know. Can you cook chicken, Eve? I can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you better not say you can. But anyway, <laughs> no. but anyway they, wanted, they wanted sisters in the kitchen. And see, that, that's the whole point, is that, is that, is that that's, why we need, that's why we need sisters like Eve and others to go out there and give a woman's point of view because, see, everything is always from a man perspective. You see, in a... You know, like I always go back to when we had an uh, an uh, a beta junior club, and uh, you know, and, and our and our junior our junior uh, our junior uh, achievement club was for kids who were, you know had uh, A averages and stuff like that and stuff, and and see, I was the uh, I was one of the male coordinators, and the rest were all women. Now I said we wanted to give our kids a kick ass a kick ass spirit a kick ass attitude. And the ladies would say, uh, Dr. Winters, no, 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 no. Don't tell the kids that. I said, well, hey, uh, there's it, no parents around. You go out and do that. <laughs> and, you know, and so it's very important. I mean, what do you what do you think? What do you tell your kids? And I know they're young, very young. But what do you try to tell them? Um, no, if if you ain't first, you're last. No, we, we very much are rearing some competitive 
minis over here. Um, and by default, I think because we're both competitive and then on purpose, because we want them to be able to be confident in their ability. And, you know, when everybody gets an award because you did it, then you don't know that you're the shit. And if you do something that makes people look at you like, oh, I can't do that. That's really cool. You should get, you know, you should get respect for that. Um, so, you know, which every time you've told me that story about those women, they wouldn't have liked me because I would have been, you know, no, we're going to go out there and we're going to kick ass, take names and you know, take no prisoners. And we have to foster this competitive spirit in our minis specifically because I feel like they were taught to cower. You know, so many kids keep, not keep, but I've heard so many stories and just in my own story of it's, you're too loud. It's, this is not the time or place for that. And maybe the library isn't the time or place to be all extra loud. But, you know, p kids are getting told they're too loud in the grocery store or they're too loud at the mall, too loud in public. And what is that other than you just don't want to hear them? And why don't you want to hear them? You know, it's all sorts of different dark, nasty layers of why children's voices get suppressed. But I think it's even it's even more ingrained from you know, if you spoke up, then maybe you got uh, you got you get a target put on you. So you have to move in silence. You can't you can't just be the person that says, I got the plan. I got the I got the. You know, you can't do that because then now everybody's paying attention to you and not the people you want to pay attention to you. You know, the other people are now paying attention to you. So, you know, maybe you can't be so loud, but you should be confident. And but I, I think. But I think also back then it was a different women. I think the women, the women teachers of, of my generation, they weren't to, they weren't involved in athletics because a lot of times we went to urban schools. A lot of us didn't have tracks. You know, just like when I ran track, we had to uh, we had to set up the hurdles, the hurdles on the third floor. You know, and, and can you imagine you know how we did I, I know hurdles, exactly how that is hurdles. <laughs> and I, you're trying to Jump over hurdles in the third on the third floor. You're running track on the third floor. A lot of a lot of times, you your pool wasn't that good, so you didn't have swimming, and and they even had even less. They didn't even have girl basketball back then. So so I think that in a sense, the women were more domesticated right. back then. In the century, had home economics, and and I think that that's one of the reasons why women didn't. A lot of women who 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 would help me manage clubs back then didn't really see, didn't really think you should be trying to encourage kids that had kick-ass spirit, whereas I think you said you ran track and a lot of girls now could be on basketball teams and and uh, and, and and things like and track, basketball, soccer, soccer. So then I think that that, that gives, you, gives you guys from a different generation, a different attitude than those women back in the day. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. So no knock on them. Um, competitive in a different way, for sure. Um, but just, um, I, I very much believe that parents should do something physical activity type of com competitive something with their child, because if you're not helping them with their confidence, then outside's going to help them with their confidence. And that might not be the help that you want them to have. You know, maybe they're overly cocky or maybe they underperform because they were told, that it's not their job. You know, there's a special kid on the team. Coach's son is on the team. So pass the ball to coach's son all the time, even though Daquan can shoot better than coach's son. But, you know, now he can't. And I've <laughs> at, at the same school that we've been talking about, the track team didn't have a track. So I had to bus, bus. I had to drive them in, in sets to a track so that we could practice like the white schools because the white schools had tracks. So we had a track team, no track. How are we, how, how do you even teach the concept of running around a circle to children who don't have a circle to run around? You know, yeah. that, it's a setup. So um, they, they definitely withhold resources from us so that we can't be as competitive, but in the same breath I've seen children who you know, they don't have those same resources, but they outperform, they excel, you know, they have it in them 
and they just need somebody who's on their side to help nurture that. Um, it should come from home. Home should be preventative care across the board, whether it's health, education, um, I don't know, whatever, else, spiritual stuff, uh, entertainment. It should, home should be a preventative uh, department on your life. And then all of the outside influences, you know, because you got a barrier. But, but you know, I think it's very difficult because back in the day, like my wife, she never worked and she got mad and said, I always want, I want to work. And said, well, go get a damn job. You're keeping me from a job. I wasn't keeping me from getting a job. You'd like to have babies and, 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 and raise the little <laughs> ones and stuff. That's what I think. But that was what, but, you know, but I mean, hey, but the point is this is that she did have the opportunity to stay home, even though, even though it was, it, it could, it would have been better if maybe she would have worked. But see, you guys got to work. I mean, your generation got to work. I mean, if you're fifty, if you if you're fifty and younger, you got to work, and your wife got to work. If you guys want to live, you don't want to survive. You want to be able to enjoy the sun. You want to enjoy get that power in the sun, and if you're able to enjoy the sun, get the power in the sun, you have to have that monies, those monies, and and those monies come from from two salaries, and and a lot of times in a sense. You know, I was looking at the uh, at a thing the other day. I was talking about the average the average salary for black people in this country is twenty two thousand. What the hell is that? And now, now the average salary for white people is thirty one thousand. What? 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 Thirty one thousand. You know, because everything is now everything is moved down from uh, everything is moved down in a sense from from people having real jobs. Everything is the gig economy or if it's not the gig economy, it's, it's the social services. or You know, a lot of people's in the hospitality field. They're working at, at these uh, little little dummy jobs. And then the people at the uh, working for high tech companies, they're getting laid off, you know. And and so then it's very difficult. And so, so you know, I remember uh, when I, when uh, Samuels was on talking about the high high value man, $100,000. A lot of them sleeping in their cars. So I don't, I don't know what the hell you're going to do, you know. What are you going to do? And. And these loans, you know, I was talking to my uh, my grandson the other day, and I was saying, you know, you should want to go to school near near Chicago, and in, in Chicago you wouldn't have you wouldn't have to borrow so much money, you know. I said your cousin, she went down to uh, she went down to Alabama, you know, and she's paying all this money, and all they want to do is give you a loan. Oh yeah, they give you this scholarship, that scholarship, that grant, but then when it comes when it comes to housing, you got to get a loan to pay for that housing. And you don't get food on Sunday. What the hell is this? But again, in a sense, everybody has to learn. And, and so then that's why we need reparations. We need reparations so we can have more time in the sun, get more power. And I need my check. And if I could just get my check, I could I could I could be out there. You know, because see, with a check, you can you can buy your own land. You can you can pay to go to college. You know, you can you can start a business. And so a check is much better than land, you know. Absolutely. Cut the check. Cut Absolutely. it right now. You know. Uh, power is money. Maybe that should have been the title of the of the program. But um power is money, but power, but 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 also remember, remember, that's why they started the most important thing that the white men ever started, and what they started to make sure that we could leave the house is uh is taxes. Yep. You know, and yep. another if you don't work and pay your taxes. They can take your house, even if you've been paying on it for 30, 40 years, they can take your house after the mortgage is gone. And so that was just to make us have to go to work. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. that force uh, being inside and, you know, people, people are inside for 40 and 50 years before they have some resources to go outside. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't enjoy retirement or anything, but I find that, you know, now, especially since the dollar is shit, it, or at least things cost so much, you know, you're what you used to be able to do, you can't do now. Um, you got to get creative. And, mm -hmm. and now we're back to the conversation of people are having disconnects in real life, meeting people are having meaningful relationships because they've got these expectations about what we do when we go outside, mm -hmm. when we should be worried about 
you know, is this motherfucker crazy? You know, maybe we should have some conversations, you know, maybe we don't spend so much. And I'm not just talking about the dudes, fellas. I'm talking about the female too. She could be batshit crazy. And you've spent so much money to impress or to, to lay the foundation to get something later when other foundations hadn't been laid, you know, um, you know, people are out here looking for everything and nothing, not wanting to do the work, but wanting the benefit. You know, they, they want, what did you call it? Melan, what did she call the melanin photosynthesis? Mel, 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 melanosynthesis. Melanosynthesis. Melano when you synthesize the sun and the melanin is, is producing that energy, melanosynthesis. Yeah, I think people want to synthesize people's energy or get things from them just from proximity to and not any of the nuances or intricacies that come with being a social people, being a people who create families or being suns and moons to earths and, and growing something or creating life or making something sustainable. It's scary. It, 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 you had to admit it's kind of scary, you know, like, uh, you know, I remember, remember a lot of times my wife, you know, after we maybe had in a course and said, well, I'm pregnant and stuff. Say what? Okay. Well, you know, I don't know. I don't know. But the thing is, this is that, but then at the same time, you want to, you want to separate them maybe two years and all that type of stuff. So you had to have, you had to use something, you know, maybe in a whatever. But the point is, this is that, in terms, in terms of, of nurturing, in terms of, of, of being able to, to use the sun effectively and being able, in a sense, to create this thing is that it takes time to get to know each other. And, and I think that because of the fact we spend so much time at work and we come home tired, it's very hard to go into the sun and, and really get that um, melanosynthesis, be able to, to, to draw in that power from the sun. And, and that's why you'll find even Black people who have, who have vitamin D deficiencies. Mm-hmm. Because of the fact we can't really get that sun, you know, to really uh, be able to, to fight these diseases and to fight things. And and uh, and if you notice, in a sense, is that that during the uh, pandemic, the more people that was out, the people who were out were the people, in a sense, you know, the uh, the uh, who do they call the essential workers, the essential workers, they were the main ones not catching the plant, the pandemic, because they were out there in the environment, and they was in a sense being, uh, you know, letting the sun help them to fight because the sun has power to help you fight disease. Mm -hmm. The sun has power to help you. Like you said earlier, the sun can even help you to maybe uh, not be so depressed or not so lonely. Mm -hmm. You know, you can be, you, it can't stop you from being lonely, but it can maybe stop you in a sense from being, from being in a sense, uh, you know, uh, uh, succumbing to it or going into depression, you know, mm -hmm. and because uh, it's so easy to be depressed. Absolutely. And I mean, really, the lonely thing would be <laughs> itself if other people were outside, right? So <laughs> it's um, it's a problem that could be fixed if, if people gave a damn about the other people around them, but were so focused on uh, the dollar and making sure that our lives make sense so that we can play later. You know, we, we have aspirations of playtime, yeah. you know, but we have to wait for it. Um, I would challenge everybody who listens to us to maybe at lunchtime go outside yeah. just for a moment, just outside. And then, you know, I guess go back inside if you have to. But when I started doing that, I started going outside at lunch. I didn't want to go back inside. So as a teacher, I started implementing recess because, man, F them people. I'm sorry. The children need the sun. I need the sun. We need to be outside of this building for a little bit. And, you know, executive decision made. I guess that's power when you start saying, I'm just going to do it and then do it and let the consequences come if they're going to come. I never had any negative consequences as much as other children wanted to be in my class now. And now I have all of these children <clears throat> who I have zero relation to or needing to be in a mm. class of mine, wanting to be with me because oh, Miss uh, Miss Eve's class gets to go outside. Oh, Miss Eve's class gets to go outside. How do, how do you get in Miss Eve's class? And, and that, that turned into a thing. But, but, you know, that was a big thing because, see, the schools went away from that because, you know, it's just like when, when you could go home at 12 o'clock 
when you had an hour to go home for lunch, that made a big difference in a sense. Sometimes you still stay at school, but it gave you it gave you a, a, a chance to really get out there in the sun and absorb that power. And then in a sense, they took away uh, they took away recess. It was hard, it was a hard fight to get recess back into schools in Chicago because the fact is this is that they just felt everything was supposed to be uh, everything was supposed to have been, you know, uh, 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 about about hard work and all that. But that was in the in the public schools, you know, the private schools. Oh, they were having this and they were having that. They were having recess. Mm -hmm. They was having time in the sun. But see, they always, you know, we got all these AKAs. Uh, stop, Clad. Stop, stop. AK, you got all these AKAs running these school systems. I'm gonna be honest. You got these Alpha Kappa Alpha women running these school systems. And I'm sorry to say, the 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 these AKA sisters, they they hire other AKA sisters, and they believe whatever they believe whatever's popular education wise, and they ruin they ruin they and ruin so many school systems, public school systems around the country that they should be ashamed of themselves. Yes, I'm talking about you. I'm I'm sorry. I'm not. I wasn't a brother in a in a, in a fraternity, but AKAs. It may it may be some it may be some AKAs that are really down. For, uh, for black people and black education, but most AKAs I've found are not down. Deltas, mm, so-so. You know, Sigmas, all they want to do is party in any way. I mean, so we don't think about Sigmas, but AKAs, they, 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 destroy, they destroy so many public school systems because they don't think for themselves. They don't, they don't really, they just go out whatever is popular, whatever is popular, you know, education-wise, whatever the administrate, whatever the, the administrate the uh, people over there tell them to do they do it, you know. I'm sorry, no, I'm not prejudiced against AKAs. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> yeah, this is not a, a an AKA bash as much as right. The shoe fits, you know. Do something about it if you don't want that shoe to fit. But you're right. Um, people, well, I always thought it was strange. People not in the classroom wanting to run the classroom, but. That's across the board. People making the decisions for the people in it, they're not in it. They're making the decisions for the people in it. So I guess they're in something else or not. It's an illusion because they're also in it, but they need to give privileges. But that's the way it's always been. Education, is ne education has never been ran by educators. Hmm. See, because remember, remember education, remember Public education was started by the business community. So you can know just enough so that you could come and work for them. Right. So then therefore, education has never been, never been, you know, teacher centered. Education has always been dictated to us by by the people. I mean, that's one of the reasons why if you remember the public teach the public school teacher, they 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 had to come usually to a town and they lived in somebody's house. Mm -hmm. Doctors too. That's why the two lowest paid fields, yes. Is medicine and education because they feel that that we should do that for free. I I hear them, but um, you know, if that's the case, then we should all be healing and educating ourselves. You know, free ninety nine on that. But <laughs> if you don't or can't, then maybe you should pay someone to. I was talking to my uh, our oldest son, Minnie, and he 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 asked all the time why why does he have to go to school. He doesn't like being in school. He very much wants to be done with this and on to something else. And, and I tell him all the time, master everything you need to master and you don't have to be here. You could be doing something else. And I think if, you know, if you give them that approach, either they're going to say, yes, I'm going to knuckle down and I'm going to master all of this. Or they're going to say, huh, maybe I'm going to just chill and, you know, I'm relaxed. We've got spring break coming up, you know, um, it's, it's not so bad on this side of on this side of the tracks, but um. but you know that's because that's because boys boys want to do everything today instead of tomorrow. You see, back when I was growing up, when I was growing up, in a sense, you had to you had to have some discipline. Your father wanted you to have some discipline, but even then, people wanted to have want to go the easy way, and that's why most boys don't want to go to school. Most boys don't want to go to college. And then later in a sense, oh, dad, I wish I would have went to college. Well, I sent you, but you didn't stay. Well, you know, I wanted a car. Yeah, you wanted a car. So you quit school to go to work to get that car. When you could have waited and you could have got, got maybe a better car, you know. Mm -hmm. And so then, and so you find this, you find this, this disconnect 
the moon women they want to go to college the sun men they want to in a sense they want to get they want to get things without without putting any work into it you know they 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 i, I remember um i used to teach i used to teach and um i used to teach uh when i was teaching at governor state a lot of times i had to teach classes on site i taught i taught uh, education education administration graduate courses and so a lot of times i would be at these white schools and so then uh, and so then and so then i would be uh teaching the uh the faculty there maybe uh educational psychology or or leadership and things like that and the interesting thing is that they would talk about the kids how a lot of kids in high school they want to do this they want to do that and then when they get to be a senior they think that they can go out and get all these good jobs without ever really applying themselves and see this is something that is very important is that is that how do we how do we get boys you know the son to understand that they have to sometime prepare themselves for the future instead of thinking everything is just going to fall in line you know tim buck 2.0 says in order to transmute high cosmic solar sunlight energy you have to vibrate on a higher frequency in order to have a symbolic relationship with the sun that's true but that means in a sense that you have to give and take and a lot of times a lot of times fellas want to be recognized as the sun recognized as leaders but they don't want to go out and they don't want to apply themselves and this is really sad and you'd be surprised how many of these kids go in high school and they, they've got everything written and they've never even took the right class they never even in a sense tried to get any training at least in the past when i went to school we had we had a shop because we had a shop you could maybe get into a uh, you know, brick lane, things like that. So it could prepare you for a job in today. But see, nowadays, at least in Chicago, to study a trade, you had to go to a suburban school mm -hmm. out in the suburbs. And, and since they don't want you in the suburbs and you don't have the money, and therefore you can't get in the trades. I was thinking today when they were talking about that uh, that that uh, that bridge that was collapsed in, uh, in, uh, Baltimore. in Baltimore. And then they was talking about the construction workers and they were all they were all immigrants, you know. And it, it's a lot of brothers who would like to have a construction job. When when I was in college, when I was in college, my father he used to be he used to uh, do construction. Uh, I helped build the uh, the Sears Tower in Chicago. Well, not the Sears. This has got another name now. I was up there on the top of that building. And see, back in the day, most of the people who who would work who did the construction was black men. But then, in a sense, they stopped hiring us. And you know that was a nice job. You made nice money and stuff. And now, and now you got they're saying that that uh, that you don't want a construction job. The immigrants are doing all the uh, doing all the uh, the work, and they're not getting paid money. No, they can get black people's jobs. They just don't want to give us those jobs. Yeah. And so, and so it's it's just it's very difficult. How do you have a family? You know, somebody was saying, you know, I remember when uh, I remember someone was saying it's got to be a husband and a wife. It's got and 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 before you should have children. But how can you get married? You know, like my uh, my grandson, he's what, 28, 28? He made 28 the other day. So he's 28, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, you know, and so how do they get married? That's all they talk about. How can we get married? You know, you only got, you're only making a, a little bit of money, you know. Right, right. You know, how, how do you get married? How do, how do you how do you be the sunshine in your in your wife's eye when, when you're not making hardly any money and she's not making hardly any money? And then you, you, you're afraid to really have a baby, you know, you know, back back in the day, I mean, hey, I'll admit, back in the day, people probably looked at me and my wife, and we were what? She was 27, and I was 29, and we had five kids. You know, people say, "Hey, what what are you doing? Hey, what what's wrong with you, dummies?" You know, you know, and and so then I what you know, but I mean, we had a lot of kids, and when you got a lot of kids, everybody kind of against you. But but see, if you have your kids, if you have your kids under control. Then they still talk about you because the point is this is that they they uh, they just feel that that is something wrong with you. You're young, you're still looking muscle bound, looking gorgeous like you, and you got all these kids that people say, "Huh, what happened?" <laughs> and see, and see, that's that's the whole point. But see, the thing is, this is that it, 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 it it's understanding that as the sun and the moon, as they as they rotate, as they as they cause the reflection see that's the whole point is that you come together to make those children and that and that you have to in a sense somewhere along the line be able to 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 give your children something to live up to, to something to aspire to I always felt that I always felt that as a father 
I had to look at my father. You know, Novi, Novi in a sense, some people said he was a whole, I don't know about all that, but <laughs> he, he's a light-skinned brother with gray eyes. So I think the women made him do it. But anyway, my father, he did teach me this. He said, he taught me that, that you should always try to be a man. He told me that you should always try to take care of your family. He told me that you should never give up on your family. You shouldn't leave. You shouldn't leave no matter how hard it got. You should stay with your woman and, and, and raise your children. And this is what my father taught me. My father told me that, that my father told me that it's about strength. And maybe that's, maybe it's wrong to think like that. But, but he told me that, that, that as a man, you are like the son. You're supposed to be strength. You're supposed to, in a sense, be a, a leader. Your kids are supposed to look at you as an example. And even to this day, I still feel my father was the strongest man on the planet because that was my dad. I didn't want him going out. Some people say my dad could be trash. Well, I didn't want my father to be in all that. But I still felt that my father, my father was, was the epitome of manhood to me. He was the epitome of, of, of how to live. And I tried to model my life on what my father taught me. Never come home at the same time. <laughs> Because then your wife will get upset when you don't make it home. You know, never tell your wife how much you make. <laughs> don't want them to worry about money. So don't tell them how much you make. And uh, and then you two can uh, pay the bills and make sure your wife always, if you do. It, a lot of cowards, they don't. a lot of men, they don't like to pay the bills. So they'll try to get their women money to pay the bills. I think it should be a, I think it should be a, a joint relationship. But I, I, but I always felt that even though my wife, um, except when we first got married, she was working at the post office. But other than that, I always felt that even though my wife didn't work, I always felt that she should. We we had to have three bank accounts. We had to have she had to have a bank account. I had a bank account, and then we had a joint account. You know, because see, the thing is, this is that I think that a, a woman always has to have her own money. You know, and it's just like a woman has to have her own house. That's one of the reasons why we can't really have a polygamous family over here. We couldn't have polygamous families because. As a man, if I had more than one wife, each wife is going to have to have her own place to stay because they're not going to stay in the same place. Those like Hebrews, I don't know how they do it. <laughs> but again, you know, you can if you can uh, get somebody mine, you can get them to do anything maybe. But this whole idea about being sunshine, moon, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm anyway. No, you're right. I think that um, I think that your dad being the example that your family used or had. That's how dads are supposed to be. I mean, whether it's a good example or a bad example, he is going to show you something or not because he's not there. And then there's an example for you in that. But um, I think that once you once the sun and the moon come together and and have some earths or little things that they're making life happen on creating life, you know, we don't want it to just be one way. You know, the earth can't only have the sun because then how does the water move? The sun's right. not making the water move. The earth can't only have the moon because you only see her because of the sun. You know, it's it's a necessary combination. And, you know, the fact that even, even in the celestial space, they're never in the same space, you know, because they're not doing the same thing. And, well, and I think... Oh, go ahead. I, I I felt I felt I felt that when I was growing up, I felt that black women had to uh, had to raise black men. And what and what I mean by that is this is that I felt that they had to they had to always make you strong. And the way they wanted to make you strong was that they never told you that they loved you. They never told you in the sense that that uh, that, that 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 you were important. They always told you be a man, stand up, fight, do this, blah blah blah. Whereas I feel, I feel that my wife and many and many black women today they're raising human beings, and there's a difference. There's a difference because when when they were raising us to be black men, they were they were making us cold. They was making us in a sense very aloof. They was making us arrogant. They was making us in a sense feeling that that we should totally dominate our women. Whereas, whereas I feel, whereas I feel that 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 my wife. And, and, and many women in this generation, they're raising human beings where you're raising your kids to respect the opposite sex. You're raising your kids in a sense to be to, to understand that 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 the most important thing in a relationship is not love, but respect, because if you respect your mate and your and your partner respects you, 
then there can be progress. And see, this is one of the things that I say, how are you doing, Tom? Spy, essential with, Manuel, with Emmanuel. I think it's very important in the sense that we understand that, 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 that there's always a sun and a moon relationship. And because there's a sun and a moon relationship, then you have to, in a sense, recognize that there's things that we have to do. And the best, and the best way to be able to do these things is to understand that we're in a partnership. And, and, and this whole idea in the sense that, that, the, that the sun should rule, okay, that's cool. The sun should be, should be in the position of, of, of maybe, you know, prominence. But at the same time, in a sense, is that in terms of, of, of trying to make sure that you gain power from the sun, that means in a sense, the way you gain power from your son, if you're a man, and, and you know, uh, you know, Eva suggested that men could be sons, the son, if you're gonna if you're gonna be the son, then you have to reflect in the sense of positivity. If you're gonna be the son, then you have to be able in a sense to to know that 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 this is important. You know, Natty asked Natty asked a good question. Natty said, I have a kind of dumb question. Are there some nights that the moon is completely not in the sky? Um, if it's a rainy night, maybe, or if it's a very if the clouds are covering the sky. But remember, in a sense, the moon is supposed to always be up there, unless it's some sort of uh, something that's uh, that's that's keeping the moon away. But see, that's the most important thing to understand. That's why that's why when when we started this, I referred to women to women in a sense as as the moon. And and the reason in a sense that, that I see women as the moon. Not just because women invented the calendar, but also in a sense, remember in a sense is that is that the moon, the moon in a sense creates who you are, what you are. The moon in a sense, because of the fact that it can move the waters, and we know in a sense that 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 we're what? You know, we're most we're mainly made up of a, of, of water. And since we're mainly made up for water, then, then naturally, in a sense, the moon or, or woman is going to have a greater effect on us, you see. Then, in a sense, the sun, which is the uh, which is in a sense man in a way. But see, but the whole point is this: is that we have to understand that 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 there's this relationship between the sun and the moon, and that and that and that because of the fact, in a sense, that that even though you are the sun, if you think if you're a man, at the same time you're the sun, you always have to remember, in a sense, that you're allowed to be the sun. You see, you're not just the sun because of the fact is that aha, he's up on a, he's he's up on a He's up in the sky. He's above everybody else. No, he's above women. No, you're not above women. You're not above anybody. The only thing is, is that you should be that example. You should be able, in a sense, to shine a light on your children. You should be able to shine the light on your friends. And you should be able to shine a light on anybody that comes past you in the sense that you should be, you should be in a sense, throwing off positivity. You should be sharing with sharing with the rest of mankind, in a sense, a love, you know, for nature, a love for who you are and a love for what you are. You see, the sun is important because the fact is that the sun nurtures us. The, the sun is important because it it, it helps the uh, plants to grow and it has that power. And because it helps the plants to grow, it gives us sustenance. You see, it gives us sustenance. It's the sun, in a sense, that makes planting so that the fish can have can have, in a sense, food to eat, you see? It's the, it's the sun that, that allows, in a sense, flowers to, to, to take in the minerals and then have the energy to produce, you know, the foods that we eat. And so the sun is very empowered. So there is power in that. And so then when you do, if you do want to, in a sense, say that many men, in a sense, could represent the sun, that's so true. But I think also is that is, is that when you're in a family, you find, in a sense, is that is that is that 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 mother? She's also she's also representative of the sun, and the reason that she's representative of the sun is that she nurtures us, she 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 protects us, she allows us to be able to grow and to know who and what we are. And see, the problem is is that is that we've been conditioned to feel, in a sense, that that there has to be a dichotomy. You know, has to be a separation of of, of man. You know, it's it's hard to get in a sense get people together. But when you understand, in a sense, that that you're bringing both both together, and when you're bringing both together, then therefore, in a sense, you're able to create positivity because you're bringing together the moon and the sun, and that's very important. It is, and um, as it stands, 
I guess the moon, the full moon that we had the other night and the upcoming solar eclipse that we have. The weather here is kind of crazy. I don't know if y'all saw the flickering lights, but I lost power. And um, <laughs> we've been talking about power all night, right? So I, I found it fitting, uh, a fitting interruption. But I'm glad that you were able to keep the conversation going at least until we end it. Because um, reality check, when storms are really bad, you shouldn't be on all these devices. Well, that that's that's you know, that's a, that's a, that growing up black. <laughs> Oh boy, back in back in the day, your mom wanted everything turned off. Turned everything off. Like, gotta be turned off. Sit down, be quiet, and all be that. Quiet. <laughs> you know, don't uh, somebody, you know. But uh, my mom used to always say, "Yeah, that plane crash, you're killing those white folks." Now we fly planes, so we can't say that. <laughs> but it was, uh, you know, I, I remember in the sense is that, uh, you know, it, it, it's very, you know, it, it's very, it's very interesting that. That that in terms of power, sunlight, and and it's and it's how do you gain your power? Because see, to me, to me, a lot of times out, a lot of times I go somewhere and I say, hey, I tell the lady, hey, get that frown off your face, smile, give me some sunshine, and 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 I really believe this. I really believe that that even though we've said that sometimes a man can be representative of the sun, I think also I think also a, a good woman or women can be representatives of the sun. I think that that I had those teachers and I had those women in my life, grandmoms. You know, your grandma and your auntie. It's always a grandma and auntie that just that just that just make your make your your heart beat a little fast and make you just feel so good. And so I, I think, in a sense, is that is that there's no there's no single gender that can really produce that sunshine. I think it's I think it's how you feel that you release power. I like that. How you feel is how you release power. Absolutely. I want to. I'm going to agree with that. Um, wholeheartedly and say that uh, everybody, I guess, can is like a seed. And um, you can be a seed that's sprouted or you can be a seed that never sees the sun, you know. Um, and then even if you sprout, it's there's not saying that you're going to produce anything worth producing. You know, you might yield a bad crop, but, you know, it doesn't mean that the next year that you that you pop back up that you can't do something else and and i like that nature always gives us an example that makes sense because if people aren't ready you know then it's not your time but if you are ready then why not you know sprout up say something do something let's go let's let's be there and um i think that when that happens maybe through some sort of uh, telekinesis do the other seeds find that it's safe to sprout too you know the conditions are right i'm gonna go ahead and make my debut and then let the elements and and life start life in but do but do do you think a lot of that is is when you can feel that you can do what you want to do you know because because i i think i think a lot about um i think a lot about today is that the modern the modern family is that uh, I think today a lot of women don't feel as free as some as other women. Some women feel free enough that that I'm going to work, I'm going to have children, and I'm going to enjoy my life. You know, like like I love this. Uh, I love this. Uh, I love uh, ABC. It's this uh, black girl, and uh, she's the uh, she's the uh, on the weekend. She she's the uh, one of the sports sports people. And, you know, she she has her children, and she come back to work and. And you know, and then it looked like she even talked for this other this other sister to be the sports person, and I love that you know because back in the day, back in the day, it used to be a lot of a lot of sister builders and and brother builders, but now we got so many sister fuckers and brother fuckers who just spent who just spend their time trying to bring people down, and and then we got people talking about that we got to get the pork chop feminists and all that type of stuff, and 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 you know, I just feel like this is that is that. I think if people could be allowed to do what they want to do, it's much better. I mean, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. When you when you're when you feel free, you start moving in a way that makes sense for you. And it might not necessarily make sense for other people, but what you're doing, you know, has more purpose. People who are punching a clock and are on a hamster wheel, they are trying to find time to be free because they know that they're a slave to their job, the desk, you know, the work. 
And, you know, these brother fuckers and sister fuckers, they, they know how to use people like that because it's the example that the, the people in power give us, be a user, be a vampire, be a caveman, you know, take, 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 you want it now. So you can kind of be like the sun and you can be like the moon. I want you to be super emotional. I want you to just do things and not think about it. But those are like the negative aspects of us. You know, we, we have a whole other side that we could be tapping into if you wanted to, but maybe it's because you don't feel free enough to, you know, you have to take that power back. I don't have half the time to do most of the stuff that I do, but I make the time. I find the time I will do something more now so that I can have more time later. And I find that people make these sacrifices in other arenas of their life, but they won't make it across the board. And maybe they're afraid of the responsibility. You know, maybe they're afraid of what that looks like. Once you start owning your life, it gets scary. Whoa, whoa. It is scary to own your own life because see, when you, when you own your own life, that means in a sense, see, 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 a lot of people have been conditioned. A lot of people have been conditioned that because we're POWs, because we're prisoners of war, that we can't have any, we can't have any good feelings in the yard. But we can. Sometimes we can go in the yard and we can feel good about this stuff. We can, we can at least pretend that 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 they that we have a relationship with our partners because at least we have that one those two places as a teacher i had two places that i felt that i felt powerful i had two places where i felt happy i had two places that i felt were in control and that was in my home and in my classroom i felt that once i closed that door then i could i could be that light i could be that sun to shine on these kids and try to give them the opportunity to 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 catch on to that genetic memory because i always felt that education is allowing our children to to experience as much as they can in their life. And, it, and if you give them enough experiences in the classroom, maybe they'll catch on to something that they want to do that, that relates to that genetic memory. How do you see how do you see your experience as a teacher? It is a powerful position to be in. Um, to I've I've been in a position where I've had students come to my class after feeling like shit because the teacher that they just left made them feel like shit. And I don't know that they went out of their way to do it as much as they didn't care. They did. They did. So then they don't care about the affect, you know, and then this student, you know, could have just gone through their day with nobody who gives, who cares about, you know, how they feel. And then they get to me and I don't like that. I, you're not going to have no frowny face, mopey face, the energy. I don't like it. So we're going to fix it now because you're not going to learn. And you got all this other stuff on your brain. Nope, nope, nope. We're going to squash that. And for the next hour or 90 minutes or whatever, we're going to focus because all that other stuff is, mm -hmm. it, it matters, but it's not going to matter right now. You know, we uh, can, can address it later. So that's why I love teaching. I love teaching uh, upper grade because when I taught high school, because I was a compassionate teacher, you know, you have these girls come to you talking about their, their, their mother's boyfriend raping them. You know that you know that 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 being abused in the home, I just couldn't take that stuff because I used to call them, I used to call them situational things. And see, as a teacher, I can't affect a situation. I can maybe call DCF, I can maybe call you know Department of Family and Services, but the whole point is this is that that can cause problems there too. And so then I I felt I feel I felt better teaching uh, undergrad. I, I felt better teaching upper grade because in elementary school they don't. At least when I was teaching, they didn't tell you all their deepest problems. They didn't tell you about the home problems. And you know, so many when you're teaching high school, girls are having so many problems with, especially when you when you're teaching in in the, in the community, in the hood, and 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 the fact that a lot of them come from families where their moms are letting these men come into their houses and and all that type of stuff. So it's it's hard. It's very hard on you as a teacher when you keep hearing about what's being done to your, your students and you can't do anything about it, mm -hmm. you know? And, and yeah, maybe call me a coward, but I, but it's, it's hard because see, when, as a man, I remember, I remember that we had a kindergarten teacher and she was a white teacher. She said, she said, Dr. Winters, 
you men get on my damn nerves. I said, why do you say that we get on your nerves? She said, because she said, because Clyde, I just want to talk about how I feel. I just want to talk about something that happened to me, but you always got to find a solution. And I said to my, I said, Hey, I thought that's why you brought it up to me. You wanted a solution. And then she said, no, we don't want solutions all the time. Clyde, we don't want solutions. We just want you to listen. And this is, and this is, this is one of the hardest things I think that that makes it hard for us to really be partners in relationships is that you're just talking and I want to make a correction as the son when 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 you just want somebody to listen sometime and that's very hard very hard absolutely absolutely but then that kind of goes back to what we originally talked about um the the black man and the black woman you know if we even look at the sun and the moon as the same or if there's differences in our perception there and i i think that there are and will be on purpose necessary because we're not doing the same thing you're never going to know what it feels like to birth a child mm -mm. ever. I don't want to. And I'm never going to know what it feels like to get kicked in the nuts. And I don't yeah. want to, you know, I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, inside of those differences, you know, we can, we can come together and really make some really powerful things rock. We can build the best businesses. We can make the best trends and we can, foster the best uh, environments and, and we can rear some badass kids. Um, but, you know, that's, it's a, it's a partnership and a balance that's necessary. You know, it can't be all emotion and it can't be so structured, you know, that if, if it were supposed to be all one way, then the man and the woman would look the same. We would have right. the same pieces and parts. And then right. who cares who do, who does what as much right. as, you know, some things, should be self-evident you know you should be able to wipe your own ass you know but if you need help then hopefully you got your moon there or your son you know and you got someone there that you trust who can help you out but it shouldn't be that you didn't know how to do it but uh like i think i told you oh, in the past um I, growing up my parents didn't let me cut grass or, or pump gas you know that was for my brother those were things for the boys to do and um as such dishes and laundry not that they didn't learn how to do it but that wasn't their that wasn't their chore mm. you know we, we we learned different things growing up because we're supposed to be doing different things growing up but there's power in owning your owning your life and saying that you're going to do something and then going and doing it yeah because you know it's just like um my mom always wanted us to learn all that good stuff because i mean just like now my wife is gone i had to admit i was spoiled but now that my wife has died and, and and I had to take care of me, it's no it's no fun because I I I, I depend on her to be my Rolodex. I have to depend on her to, in a sense, you know, to be everything that I didn't want to do, or couldn't do. And see, I think that it's trying it's trying in a sense to stay, it's trying in a sense to do just what Natty said, the duality of our reality keeping the balance, and that's very hard. You know, we went over two hours. Did you want to say something to close? Um, actually, I wanted to address something Natty asked in the chat. I think he said, uh, Natty said, um, is there a time when the moon is just not there? And no, the moon's always there. You just not, might not be able to see it, right, because of the clouds. And, you know, I think that our perception, how we actually see things, you know, with our physical eyes mm -hmm. and then our mind's eye, you know, it matters. So if we if we're looking for something that's not there, then maybe we start to feel a certain way. But if we know that it's there and we just can't see it, you know, maybe we just need some time. Um, mm -hmm. I think that this power conversation and time is going to overlap all the time. <laughs> I don't mean to be redundant, but I think that with time, we can understand power. And like we studied the sun, you know, people who got here later saw us worshiping the sun when really we're just respecting all that it can do and you know your your immaturity here or your ignorance in our practices doesn't mean that it's something that we should forsake or even something that we should rename you know worship of versus respect of you know we we can own things if if we care 
<laughs> and if you care, then claim it. And um, yeah, if you care, claim it. You guys have a great evening. Good night. Good night.